Hi, this is Tim from Time to Sew, and I'm here with another little workshop, and this time we're going to be doing enamelling. Uh, it, this is a new type of enamelling. It's from a company called F Color. Here's uh, one of our packages, and the unusual thing about it is that it melts at a lower temperature. So rather than leaving an expensive kiln and a lot of other sort of specialist equipment, it can actually be enamelled just in a domestic oven or in this little candle powered oven that we have on the website. So as you can see, it looks like the sort of thing you'd see in a Chinese restaurant to keep your rice hot. And those three candles are sufficient to raise the temperature within the oven itself to melt the enamelling powder. So, here we go. First off, I'm cleaning up the copper blank with, in this instance, a bit of steel wool, but you can equally use sandpaper, or uh, sanding block is probably the easiest. This is to get rid of the oxidization on the copper and to make sure there's no grease or oil on it that's going to stop the enameling from bonding to the metal. Once that's cleaned up, then obviously you can't touch it, so I'm using this little U-shaped piece of metal as a stand to hold my blank up off the table. This is the enamelling powder, so I'm taking the lid off the tub and replacing it with a little lid with a sieve in the end. And then I'm just tapping it with my fingernail to sieve the powder over the top of the blank. So on it goes, nice layer right the way across. You can always add an additional layer even once you know one layer is melted, but you don't want to go too thick or else it will end up a bit blodgy. So there we go, that's the layer done. And then I use a little spatula to slide in underneath the blank and lift it up. So I'm going to just lift it like so and tip the surplus powder off of my stand, put the stand onto this little frying panny thing and then oh, there we go. And then I'm going to just shoot the surplus back in the tub. So then away it goes into the oven and it stays there for about five minutes till the powder has melted. When it's done I'm going to take it out, let it cool So here's the blank blue on one side out of the oven and I'm putting it onto my rest blue side down and using the enamelling powder again I'm going to sprinkle a layer across the surface. Now if I was to put this back into the oven on the same rest as I'm using here as I did before, when that metal warmed up it would leave marks on the bottom surface that's been enamelled. So that's where this thing comes in. Um, I'm going to lift the powdered blank using the spatula tool and just rest it on these prongs. So it's just touching the edge. Occasionally you get little marks on the back but it far less than if you were to lay it flat down on something. So back into the oven now and out it comes again and I've just put another layer of powder over the top and I'm just laying on top of it a little spiral of wire that I've bent. So back onto the rest and into the oven and when that comes out this is what you get. Now racing ahead again I'm cleaning up another blank with the steel wool again to get the oil and oxidization off and it's a funny little 
shape, I don't know quite what you call that. And I've also got a little cross. Um, the cross blank actually comes with a, a loop in the top to hang it, but I've cut that off and just sandpaper the top to smooth it off. And I'm putting the gold enameling powder onto the cross and as you saw black enameling powder over the backing blank. So in the same way that we embedded the wire into uh, the previous one, the black first black layer has been baked on. I'm putting a second thin layer over the top of the first and I'm then going to just position the gold cross on top of this thin layer of black powder and put it back into the oven to soften the, the black so that it will accept the cross. So here I am using the pliers as a pair of tweezers. I'm just dropping the gold cross into the black enameling powder. Then into the oven and once again five minutes in the oven and we'll see what happens. Here we go and out it comes. Put it on my uh, chopping board, let it cool down. It's a nice contrast, the, uh, the gold against the black there. I think it should be cool enough now to handle. So let's have a look, see what we got. And here we go, that's now cooled. And you can see the finished effect. So the oblongy shape I've, I don't know, is oblong? Rhomboid, they call it, a rom this rhomboid shape um, in black with the gold enameled cross on top. And as you can see, the, the cross isn't sort of stuck on, it's actually now part of it, embedded in the black. Now, same again, so I've cleaned this uh, dragonfly blank up with the, uh, the steel wool and put it onto the rest. I'm now shaking over this sort of off-white powder. This is an unusual one, it's um, a glitter powder. So it goes on white, it looks almost like dirty icing sugar. Um, and I've just put a, a full layer across there. Now I'm going to lift it off of that rest with the spatula, drop it onto the other, and then away into the oven. And lo and behold, this is what it looks like when it's cooked and out of the oven. Now this is a kit. It comprises of the copper blank, two different colours of uh, enamelling powder, a sieve top, a chain, jump rings, and a metal embellishment, a little sort of pretend diamondy thing to go on the front. So I've cleaned the, the blank up, and I'm just going over the bottom two thirds with this mauve, is it mauve, whatever, colour powder, and then sopping powders and putting pink on from the top. To save boredom, I'm doing this speedy speedy with the video. There we go, so we've got like a high tide line there. And then I'm gonna put that into the little oven. So, I'm just lifting it off of one U stand onto another and into the little candle powered oven. You can use this type of um, 
oven or you can just put it in your normal cooker. So there's the candles lit to get that, that get up to temperature and then about five minutes to cook it. So I think that's done now having chopped a bit out of the middle with the video and obviously all the metal is hot so you need to be careful use a cloth to lift it out now I need to do exactly the same for the reverse so here it is now with both sides coloured and again I use that um, stand with the pointy bits on so as not to spoil one side and I'm just putting a second layer of powder over the blank just a thin layer this time and dropping in the metal embellishment so there it goes using my tweezers or my pliers as tweezers and then I've got that little pretend diamond and that's going to sit where should I put it perhaps over there no nope. change of plan yeah all right, so there we go. So now I'm going to bring my stand over because this is um, enameled on the back. I'm going to need to use the the prong holder, or else it would spoil the back. And it's just lifting it with the spatula, sitting it on top of there, and then back in the oven. And here we go. Here's the finished piece with Mandy modelling it. And here are some other pieces we've made. This is. Uh, just a plain white dove. Then this one has the bands of colour and the bird. The next few have been done with stencils, so shaking different colour powders through the through a stencil. This is a nice finish. This is called a structure powder. It goes on black, and then as you heat it the silver appears and then finally just a plain red heart thank you for watching I hope you enjoyed that and as always everything that I've used today is available on our website www.timetosew.com thank you for watching goodbye